Y'all take a look at these uh, fresh manure patties like this one right here. You can see that there's a lot of corn in it. Oh, this one's clumped up a little hard, uh, but that's okay. So they're not uh, clumping up too bad. Uh, there's a lot of fresh manure patties out here with a lot of corn in it. Uh, I got a lot of manure out here that has a lot of corn in it right now. And so uh, yesterday I did get the, uh, the dry distiller grains in. And I got these animals on the dry distiller grains. If you take a look inside their feed troughs, that powdery looking stuff, that's the dry distiller grains. And you can see there's a lot of corn in their poop right now. And uh, you know, a few days ago, I was saying that if I want to increase, uh, I, was, I was reading a, a study that was done and uh, increasing the average daily gains on these, on these, uh, on these cattle or on cattle. And uh, they increase the average daily gain by increasing the amount of corn that these animals are eating. Uh, they increased the amount of corn that the animals were eating and they reduced the amount of silage they were getting and they were able to increase the amount of daily gain that the animals were getting. And so uh, yesterday uh, I fed them a little bit more corn. I fed them about 50% more corn and they immediately just started pooping a whole bunch of it out. And so right now uh, I figured that what I'm going to do right now is that I'm going to put these animals on a high forage diet and I'm going to slowly introduce more corn. They're at about their limit for about the uh, for the amount of corn that they can eat. They're about at, uh, at their limit. If I feed them any more, they'll start pooping it out. And if they poop it out for too long, if they poop out too much corn for too long, it'll turn into diarrhea. It'll turn into acidosis. And so right now, uh, I got these animals. Uh, so yesterday, I fed them uh, four buckets of corn and uh, two buckets of dry distiller grains. And uh, they started uh, having a lot of uh, uh, corn in their poop. And so uh, I've, I've reduced it by half this morning. And so uh, I put them on two buckets of corn and a bucket of dry distiller grains. And uh, I'm like, maybe I'll give them uh, one more bucket of corn, but I'll have to take a look at it. I got them on a lot of hay out here. So, uh, you know, I really don't want these animals having acidosis. And so I figured, you know, right now uh, the big thing, like, and if you take a look at this animal's rear end right here, she got a lot of diarrhea on her butt. And so that's a good sign of acidosis as well. And so I don't want these animals having acidosis. And so I'm going to slowly introduce them to the dry distiller grains and the corn mixture. And I'm going to put them on mostly hay. And right now the uh, the daily gains on the uh, the daily gains are not going to be that good. You know these animals are not going to be gaining very rapidly, but they're going to be uh, gaining weight on a very safe diet. And I don't want to be giving my animals uh, acidosis. That's the big thing. And so. Uh, and I got a calf over there just not looking, uh, I don't know what's uh, going on with that one, but uh, let's go take a look at them actually. Let me see if I can uh, push them off into the, uh, into the, into the preconditioning pen. But this morning uh, I was running numbers and I was taking a look at things. And okay, so, uh, you know, I was saying this on my other video, but these animals, when they're this small, when I bring them home from the cell barn, I'm going to see if I can get this uh, preconditioning pen closed up and I'm going to see if I can get them pushed into the preconditioning pen. And uh, I'll give them a shot of medication. Uh, I'll take a look at them. I'll maybe put them in the in the preconditioning pen. But uh, this morning I was thinking about things, and uh, I was saying that uh, you know when I bring in these animals this small, when I bring them in real small, you know the chance of an animal dying. I gotta lock everything back up, and then I wanna see if I can push them in this way. But the the uh, the chance of an animal dying is about 15% when they're this small. You know. Uh, let me uh let me get this uh figured out real quick. Give me a second. It's stuck on there real good. But uh the chance of an animal dying when they're real small is about 15% if I bring them home from the cell barn. And uh you know, even if I take real good care of them, you know, the chance of them dying is about 15%. And so uh, you know, I've always uh the the thing that I say is that uh you know you gotta evaluate things for the money that is involved. That's just a part of business. Uh, you know, if you're gonna run a business, you should figure out what's happening with the money and where the money's going and keep track of it. And uh, I was thinking about this this morning, but if I put a monetary value to the uh, to the calves that I'm losing, you know, if I bring home 10 to 12 calves a month, uh, that essentially means that I'm gonna lose, uh, you know, one or two animals a month, and that's just the calves. That's just the calves, and so, uh, once they hit about the big weight, once they hit about uh, 400 pounds, the chances of me losing uh, another one is about uh, is about 5%. So let's 
So let me see if I can get them uh, pushed off into the pen over here. And uh, so, uh, you know, uh, let's go, Bubba. When they're this small, he's not gonna wanna go, I don't think. Yeah, he's not gonna wanna go. When they're this small, and you can see that the, the manure has a lot of corn in it. But when they're this small, the chances of me losing an animal is about 15%. You know, when they're this, but I mean, he's okay. I think, I, I just don't think uh, he's very hungry. I mean, at that size, he's not going to eat a whole lot. He, I mean, uh, you know, he'll, uh, he'll fill up pretty fast. And so, you know, like when they're this size right here, you know, when they're this size right here and they've been on my farm and they've been vaccinated and everything, uh, you know, the chances of me losing an animal, maybe about 5%. But when they're real small, the chances of me losing that animal are about 15%. And so... You know, if I got 50 animals back here, you know, if I run a, if I run 150 animals back here, you know, a year, if I run 150 animals a year back here, I'll lose like a, you know, a, I'll lose like a five, six of them. By the time everything is finished, uh, when they're this big, I'll lose five or six of them. When they're this small, if I bring in 12 a month, I'll lose, uh, I'll lose one or two a month. Oh, that's about the average, uh, you know, and so I was running the numbers on that and I was like, you know, if I'm going to lose one and a half calves a month, that's about a thousand dollars a month. You know, uh, if I'm going to lose that money, if I'm going to lose that money anyway, you know, uh, granted that me, uh, you know, I do a little bit better than the average. You know, I do a bit better than the average. I would say that me personally, uh, you know, uh, you know, I would say I'm closer to one a month. I, I don't, I don't really uh, get close to that two a month, but I get, I may, maybe I'm closer to about one a month. I would lose about one animal a month when they're that size. I lose about one of them a month. And uh, I was running the numbers on that, and I was like, you know, if I'm gonna lose seven hundred dollars a month, I'm gonna lose the money anyway. Then uh, what can I do with the money? Because I mean, you know, uh, this is a, a financial strategy. You know, I talk about this all the time, but the idea is called redirecting the money. When I take a look at something and I say, you know what? I have to pay for this under any circumstance. I will have to pay for this no matter what. Then I, I consider that. I take a look at that and I say, okay, I'm going to have to use $700, $750 for this no matter what. A month, every single month, no matter what. So can I redirect the money? You know, if I redirect the money, does it uh, turn out to be beneficial to me? And I was like, you know, uh, what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start budgeting $500 a month for the vet. I'm going to budget $500 a month for the vet. And when they're that size, when they're small, I'm going to take them to the vet every single week. I'm going to take them to the vet once a week. I'm just going to go ahead and take them to the vet once a week uh, on a Wednesday or Thursday. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and take them to the vet. I'll take him to the vet. Uh, the vet will look at him and uh, do everything that he does. And then uh, it'll, you know, I'll budget $500 a month for that. You know, usually it'll be about 350, uh, for 350 bucks or so. And uh, I'm going to start budgeting $500 a month for the vet. I'm just going to take them uh, when they're small. When I bring them in, the, I'm going to take them to the vet every week until they're, uh, until they're back here good to go. I'm going to get them vaccinated. I'm going to get them medicated. I'm going to get them looked at everything. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go ahead and spend the money. And uh, cause here's the big thing is that if uh, you know if I have an animal die, I may lose seven hundred fifty dollars on the front end, but I also lose the value of the animal of what the animal would have been worth on the back end. So these animals, you know, I may lose seven hundred and fifty dollars on that animal, but if that animal had survived and I had taken care of that animal and the animal had gotten big, I would have made like fourteen hundred dollars on that animal. I would have made like 650 bucks. So let's say it cost me 250 bucks to feed the animal. I would have made a net positive of $400. And so if I invest the money on the front end, if I invest the money that I'm going to lose under any circumstance, I'm going to lose the money anyway. So if I lose, if, if I invest that money on the front end, I can make a positive return on it on the back end. And so I was taking a look at my numbers this morning and I was like, you know, uh, if I'm going to lose a calf, if I'm going to lose one calf a month on the average, then I'm just going to take them all to the vet. And when these animals are back here, if, if, if I think anything at all is wrong with them, I'm going to go ahead and give them a shot of antibiotics. Uh, you know, if I think anything at, anything at all, if I look at them and I think uh, 
something just doesn't look right with this animal, I'm just going to give him a shot of antibiotics. Because at the end of the day, the antibiotics is not going to hurt the animal, right? I mean, granted that they don't have some kind of allergic reaction or whatever, right? I mean, if I give the animal the antibiotics properly, chances are drastically uh, that uh, the animal is not going to be harmed by the antibiotic. And so, uh, you know, that's the big idea for me right now is that if these animals, if they uh, even look remotely like something's wrong with them, I'm going to give them a shot of antibiotic. And the animals in the front, the small ones, uh, you know, when they're uh, when they're in the preconditioning pen, I'm gonna take them to the vet once a week, cause I'm gonna I'm gonna have to use the money anyway, and so uh, I can invest the money on the front end. The money that I was gonna lose, I can uh, I was gonna lose that money anyway. I can invest it on the front end and make a positive return on it on the back end. And so uh, you know, even if I reduce my death loss to a uh, you know a third, you know you know if I reduce my death loss by one third. You know, if I lose uh, if I lose uh, two animals instead of three, that one animal that survives and produces a net profit will uh, will be a positive return on my on my on my money. And so uh, I figured, you know, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and take him to the vet once a week. And uh, because I was thinking about it this morning, I was like, you know, um, I don't want to jinx myself. But, uh, you know, I brought home nine calves over the last uh, three weeks. I brought home nine calves. Statistically, I, I will lose one. Uh, you know, out of the nine calves, I will lose one. That That is how the numbers work out. That's what I'm prepared for. You know, that's what I'm mentally prepared for. I'm going to lose one. You know, one of the nine calves are going to die. And so I was like, you know, if I think that that is genuine, if I genuinely think that that is going to happen, then I'm going to lose money. I'm going to evaluate it for the money that is involved. And if I'm going to lose the money anyway, then uh, I'm going to redirect the money. I'm going to take that money and give it to the vet and then have the vet look at the animals once a week. And if I do that, you know, I will make money on the back end. And also, OK, here's the thing, uh, you know, about cattle feed and uh, veterinarian expenses and all this stuff. Here's the thing. It's like, you know, uh, if I don't invest into anything on my business, let's say I don't buy cattle feed and I don't go to the vet. And let's just say everything goes straight, uh, you know, I go straight walking off into La La Land, right? Everything just turns into a mystical, magical adventure for me. I don't have to worry about nothing. Turns out that uh, the world is Disneyland, right? I don't have to worry about nothing. And everything just turns out to, you know, to turn into a, a magical adventure for me. And, uh, you know, uh, well, at the end of the day, I will still have to pay income tax. You know, uh, you know, that's the thing. It's like me, you know, I bought about, uh, I bought enough feed. I would say that I bought enough feed, uh... I got enough feed put away to feed uh, about uh, 50 animals for about uh, three months, and I paid uh, 7,500 bucks for it. I paid 7,500 bucks for it, and I could probably feed about 75 animals for uh, for about three, uh, four months. And so, on the average, I was running my numbers, and I was like, you know what? That's uh, that's 1,500 dollars a month on the. Uh, you know, I would I averaged out my feed, and I said it's going to cost me about 1,500 dollars a month to feed these animals. It's going to cost me about $1,500 a month to feed these animals, but the $550 a month that I was using on fertilizer is being redirected into this money. So realistically, I'm using about $950 of extra income. And, uh, you know, you know, and 1500 Okay, so this is this is a good way to put it. You know, I pay about $160 for a ton of corn. I pay about $160 for a ton of corn. And on the average, I make about $200 a day. And so if I was going to feed these animals straight corn, I would have to feed them 2,500 pounds of corn uh, to, to start losing money on feed. So if I fed them more than 2,500 pounds of corn a day, if I, you know, I got about 40, 45 animals back here. If, if I fed each one of these animals essentially a 50 sack pound or 50 pound sack of, of corn a day, each animal, that is what it takes me to lose money right now. You know, like if I was going to lose money on feed, I would have to feed each one of these animals a 50 pound sack of corn. That is how cheap grain is right now. You know, uh, grain has legitimately gone like, uh, you know, like down like 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 uh, like 35 percent in the last seven months. Grain has genuinely dropped like like 35 percent in the last uh, in the last like year. That is how cheap grain is right now. If I were going to feed these animals to a point where I was going to lose money, I would need to feed each one of these animals a 50-pound sack of corn a day. Each one of them. And, you know, realistically right now, uh, if I was just going to use corn as a baseline for cattle feed, uh, you know, because uh, I essentially pay as much for hay as I do corn. 
And if I was going to use corn for a baseline of cattle feed, uh, I would say I feed, uh, oh, oh, for the entirety of my animals, I would say, I, you know, if I was just going to use about 500 pounds, you know, if I include, if, if I, if I just use corn as an, as an analogy for cattle feed, I probably feed about 500 pounds a day. So I would have to 500, I would have to increase the feed by 500%. I would have to five-fold my feed costs for me to start losing money on feed right now. You know, and so, you know, corn is very cheap. You know, uh, cattle feed is very cheap right now. And so, you know, uh, you know, and I don't think it's going to last for very long. You know, I think that we are at the top of the cattle market. Uh, I think that we're about to start going downhill, and I think that things are about to start getting a little bit more difficult. But, uh, you know... Uh, you know, if I don't buy the feed, I will have to pay income tax. And I and the income tax is going to be about a third. And so let's say the eight grand. Let's say I buy eight grand worth of cattle feed. Let's say let's just make it easy. Let's say nine thousand. If I if I use nine thousand, my life will be easy. So if I use if I let's just say I bought nine thousand dollars worth of cattle feed. Well, if I did not buy that cattle feed, I would have to send the government a check for three thousand dollars. Why? Because of income tax. If I purchase a tax deductible asset, I don't need to pay income tax on that money anymore. And so essentially, if you want to know what I think about what is my perspective and what do I think about when I buy a tax deductible asset, you know, uh, you know, this eight thousand dollars that I put into the cattle feed. It right off the bats, you know, the nine thousand dollars that I put into the cattle feed, granted that I feed it to the animals properly and it is a proper animal feed and the animals gain on it, etc. etc. I feed the right type of animal, etc. etc. Right? I I'm feeding a one to one and a half type medium large frame animal. I'm feeding them the proper diet requirements, you know, all that stuff. If I do that, I have saved myself three thousand dollars right off the bat. Granted that I do not lose money on the feed. Like right now, I'm definitely not losing money on feed. If I were going to lose money on feed, I would have to be feeding over 2,500 pounds of corn a day. So right now, I am definitely making a positive return on the feed. 100% I am. Right, I'm feeding a one to one and a half type medium large frame animal. The average weight of my herd is about 500 pounds. And for me to break even on feed costs right now, I would need to feed 2,500 pounds of corn. And realistically, I feed about 500 pounds. Right. I feed, uh, you know, if I include, you know, the hay and the corn or whatever, if I use everything and just use corn as a baseline for cattle feed, because I essentially pay the same for hay that I do for corn. Right. It's essentially the same price. And so if I use everything, if I just use corn as a baseline for cattle feed, as a representation of the overall cattle feed, then, you know, I would, you know, I would need to feed five times as much food for me to break even on cattle feed. And so right now I am definitely making money on the cattle feed. You know, when I feed these animals, I make money doing it. And so, you know, in this situation, when I buy cattle feed, right off the bat, I am saving myself 33%. I'm saving myself three grand. Right off the bat, I'm saving myself three grand. Because if I did not buy the cattle feed, I would have to pay income tax on that money. And so, you know, right off the bat, I'm saving myself three grand. And then this feed, I am making a positive return on it. Every time I feed my animals, I'm making a positive return on it. And so it's like not only am I, am I saving money on income tax, but I'm also turning that asset into an unrealized gain. The, the animals are going up in value and I don't have to pay income tax on that money that I am gaining in the animal gaining weight. So I am taking money, I'm turning it into an asset that is profitable to me, granted that I utilize the asset prof uh, properly. I'm feeding a one to one and a half type medium large frame animal that is at an average weight of 500 pounds. I'm feeding them a 65, 70% TDN, 12 to 14% diet, right? I'm, I'm keeping an eye on the amount of sulfur that they are consuming a day, right? You know, something like that, right? I'm, I'm feeding them knowledgeably. I'm giving them their feed in a mixed ration. I'm feeding them properly, making sure that they gain weight properly. And under these circumstances, I will make money on the feed. I am knowledgeably increasing the value of my assets, right? I'm making my money grow and I'm turning my money into an asset 
and then turning that asset into an unrealized gain. And when I do that, I no longer need to pay income tax on the money. And my wealth is growing tax free. That is what I think about. That is why I do what I do. You know, and, and that is that is what is going on with me throughout my day. You know, I woke up this morning, took a look at everything that was going on, figured, you know, if I'm going to lose money like this anyway, I might as well just redirect the money. If I save one third of the, you know, if, I, if I'm able to save 33 percent more calves, if I have two calves die instead of three, then the uh, the money that I make on the back end with the calf will be uh, will be profitable for me. You know, so I may as well just use the money up front. And, you know, um, I feed these animals on a uh, on a 12 to 14 percent protein, uh, you know, 65, 70 percent TDN diet. I need to keep their diet under a 0.4 percent sulfur concentration. I'm taking a look at the manure, making sure the manure scores are coming in correctly. You know, I'm running one to one and a half type medium large frame animals. My animals are at an average weight of about 500 right now is what I would anticipate about 550. And under these circumstances, with the grain prices where they are right now in the commodity markets and with the cattle prices where they are right now, I am able to profitably feed a commodity grain. I can just call my broker, say, hey, bring me some corn. I can mix that corn with some hay, some dry distiller grains, feed it to my animals in proper ratios. And, uh, you know, I have one to one and a half time medium large frame animals. And when I anticipate, you know, and when I feed the animals, I am definitely making money on it. 100%. These animals are not even getting close to eating 2,500 pounds of feed a day. They're not even getting close. I would say they're getting maybe uh, 500 pounds of feed a day. Maybe. And so, you know, under these circumstances, this is how I am making money. You know, if you if you really want to know, you know, I'm, I'm not going to ask you if you want to know. Uh, I'm just going to give you my perspective. You know, if you... You know, you know, if you want to see why I make such a drastic amount of money, I mean, listen to the things that I think about, listen to the things that I do on a daily basis. And when you understand what I do, maybe it will rub off on you. Right. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, I would say uh, right now I'm probably making about four thousand dollars a month and I'm going to take that money and uh, I'm going to, you know, I got my new field squared away. I got to get the fence builder over there and I got to get the well driller over there. And, uh. You know, I'm gonna keep it on going, and but that's the thing, you know. If you if you've listened to me talk for a specific or for a long, um, a large amount of time, you're gonna know uh, one of the things that I say is that the uh, the thing uh, that uh, you know, uh, if you love the word guarantee, you know, if you love the word guarantee, you're probably poor. I guarantee you'll make this much money. I guarantee this will happen to you. You're probably poor. There is no guarantee. Like a lot of you, uh, you don't understand that. Uh, one of the things about me, it's like when I look at my world, there is no guarantee. You know, like uh, there there is no guarantee. You know, uh, you know, I'm not gonna get guaranteed. You know, if things go wrong, then I need to deal with it. Uh, you know, if things go right, then uh, then I make money, and there is no guarantee, right? I mean, you can only make good choices. You can't guarantee anything, right? I mean, you know, when I take a look at these animals, do I guarantee that they're putting on two and a half pounds a day each? No. I don't guarantee it. I would anticipate it when I take a look at the animals and I, you know, uh, run, you know, and I and I think about it logically and I and I, you know, think about it and, uh, you know, I I reasonably deduce yes, they are probably putting on about two and a half pounds a day, maybe even a little bit more, right? And you know, how much do I believe that the animals valued at? Well, you know, the feeder cattle market right now sitting at about two fifty two, right? And the cash market for the cattle is a little bit lower. And then I'm also in Texas. And so our cattle are valued at a little bit less. And so, you know, there is no guarantee. Like, I can't guarantee that I'm going to make 225 240 an animal, right? And that's also why when I make my plans, I make them for $2. I, I lowball the market by 20%, right? It, you know, when I lowball the market by 20%, then, uh, then it's like, you know, uh, reasonably, th I'm going to make more money than this, right? Uh, you know... Uh, a 500 pound animal, 550 pound animal right now, a steer, uh, you know, a, a beef animal, a steer, 550 pounds. I would say uh, the average market price on them is going to be about $1,400 an animal. After commissions and everything, maybe about $1,350, $1,300. You know, I bring in, and if I was going to bring in a steer right now at about $200, I would say uh, seven to eight hundred, seven hundred fifty bucks is the average price. And so, you know, on the long average, if I brought home like a thousand animals, you know, it would be somewhere around 750, 800 bucks to bring them home. And it would be about a 1300 to 1400 at 550 on the large amount of them. 
And so, you know, if I bring them home at $750, I put $250 into them, and then I sell them, and I get $1,300 for them, I make $300 an animal. And so, you know, I'm essentially making a like a like a 40% return on my capital or 30% return on my capital about every five months. You know, I invest a seven dollars into something and, and uh, five months later I get ten dollars out. You know, granted that it doesn't just happen like that, right? I need to take care of these animals. I need to make sure these animals are well cared for. I need to put them on the right diet, take them to the vet, give them the right medications, et cetera, grow the grass for them, et cetera, et cetera, right? And so right now that is what is happening. You know, I, for me to break even on, on grain prices, and I'm going to say this because maybe it will benefit, you know, if you're in the cattle business, maybe this will benefit you too. And uh, this, these are my numbers. These are my numbers right now, and I, may, and I make a lot of money. At the end of the day, I make a lot of money. It just is what it is, right? I mean, uh, I think I've averaged bringing home about $11,000 a month cash uh, for like the last 15 months. You know, uh, and uh, I, I would say that this cattle business produces about $7,000 a month of cash for me every single month on the long-term average, six to seven grand. And so, uh, you know, uh, I'll just give you my numbers because I believe that this is objectively correct data. And these are the numbers that I am using right now. And this is how much money that I'm making. The average weight of my herd is about 500, 550. I bring my animals home or I bring them in right now at about 200. I look to bring them in at about 200 and the feeder cattle market is sitting at about 250. And uh, here in Texas, uh, you know, uh, our cattle are valued at a little bit less and our cat, you know, cash prices. I don't know if cash prices for uh, for cattle are a little bit lower across the entire country, but I would just say around in this area, you know, our cash prices are a little bit lower than the feeder cattle price. And then we also get a, a slight deduction because we are, uh, you know, here in Texas. And so, uh, you know, uh, under these conditions, under these conditions, I am able to profitably feed grain. I can just call my broker right now. I can just call, call a commodity broker, buy grain, feed it to the animal and make money on it. Right now I can. Uh, my, my average weight of my herd is about 550. I have, I have not ever seen it like this before. Usually it's like I have to grow my own feed and, and I have to grow my own grass. And depending on how good my grass is doing will largely, uh, you know, uh, determine how well I am doing in the cattle business. But right now, feed prices are so low in comparison to the cattle market that I can just call my broker, mix the feed, give it to my animals. And I'm legitimately making like a 30 percent return on my money every five months. You know, every five months, I'm making like a 30% return on my capital. I put $700 into something, or excuse me, I put $1,000 into something, and I make like $1,300 back, $1,300, $1,400 back in, in like five months. And so I, you know, I, I have not, you know, and I personally think that we are at the top of the cattle market. I think that cattle markets are going to go down and cattle markets and grain markets tend to be on a counterbalance. And so grain markets are also probably going to go up. That's just what I anticipate. And, uh, you know, I got a new field squared away. That new field, uh, I'm going to get an irrigation well drilled on it. And so uh, and uh, I'm going to start growing my own grass over there. And realistically, I want to take these animals up to about 850, 900. You know, I want to put them on grass. Once they hit about 600, once they hit about 550, I don't want to be taking them to the cell barn. I want to go put them on grass. And if I put them on grass, I can make a couple hundred extra dollars per animal. You know, and growing grass doesn't cost me hardly anything. And so at that point, you know, when it's something like that, you know, like when I have good grass and I'm feeding animals on grass, you know, I probably make like a 50% return on my money every six months. You know, if I, if I put a, a, a you know, if I put $1,200 into an animal, I'll make like $1,700, $1,800 on that animal, like within seven, eight months, six, seven months, something like that. You know, when I have grass, when I have a lot of grass, I can do stuff like that. You know, but uh, right now, uh, even if I just call my broker and I and I feed my animals a proper diet and I run proper animals, right? I, I bring in animals that are one to one and a half type medium large frame at about 200 pounds for about 750 each. If I do that and I put them on a correct diet with the grain prices where they are right now, I make like a 30 percent return on my money every about five months. And I'm just going to give you all my numbers because, you know, if you're in the cattle business, you know, these numbers, I don't know what's going on in your area. I don't know, you know, uh, you know, but in my area here in central Texas, our grain prices are high, but our cattle prices tend to be low. 
You know, uh, we have a massive cattle population in my area. I could genuinely go to the cell barn six days out of the week and watch 20,000 animals get auctioned every single week if I felt like it, except for major holidays. I mean, we have a massive cattle population in our area. I could buy 200 pound calves like every single day, uh, you know, of every single week, except for major holidays. I genuinely could. I mean, there, there are just so many cattle in my area and, uh, you know, uh, and so with the, the, the massive number of cattle, you know, I tend to be able to get a good price on them as well. You know, I can get a good price on them. I pay about seven fifty per animal. I put them on the correct diet. I put about eleven hundred about a thousand dollars into each animal. And when I put a thousand dollars into each animal, eleven hundred dollars into each animal, I get about thirteen, fourteen hundred dollars back. And so those are the numbers for my area here in Central Texas. So I don't know what your numbers look like. If you're in the middle of Nebraska, I don't know what your animal. I don't know what your numbers look like. Uh, you know, uh, I don't, if you're in South Dakota, I don't know what your numbers look like. I don't. Uh, you know, if you're in Florida, I don't know what your numbers look like. But if you're in Central Texas, you know, here are my numbers. And if you want to know what numbers in Central Texas looks like, then then here you go. You know, uh, I pay about a fifty uh, fifty cent bushel on premium on corn. You know, uh, from my understanding, the uh, the national average for dry distiller grains is about two and a quarter, two fifty, but I pay about two seventy five. I pay about two fifty, two seventy five, and so our corn products are a little bit more expensive. Uh, you know, uh, for dry distiller grains, I probably pay about twenty five dollars a ton more, and if you're next to a, an ethanol plant, you probably pay closer to about two hundred, two and a quarter. So you might be able to get uh you know distiller grains for twenty five percent cheaper than me, but I don't really care. You know if it costs me eight thousand dollars to buy enough feed to feed all of my animals for an entire year, I'm not gonna care that it cost me eight thousand dollars. Oh my god, I could have I could have bought this feed for six grand. I don't care. At the end of the day, I probably save money on cattle, right? I mean, uh, at the end of the day, my cattle prices are probably lower than yours, right? I mean, I can get cattle legitimately six days out of the week except for major holidays. And I can genuinely go and watch like 20,000 cattle get auctioned every single week within an hour and a half of me. Massive cattle population. You know, and where I bought a field, where I bought a field, it's like a population of 1,500 people and they got like 100,000 cattle over there. Right? It's like a population of 1,500 and it's like cattle population, 100,000. It's like 10 cattle per person, eight cattle per person. You know, that's what, you know, and there are a lot of cities like that around here in this area. You know, a lot of, a lot of places where there are just more cattle than there are people. And, you know, and you can go to cell barns. I can legitimately go to a cell barn six days out of the week, except for any major holiday and watch like 20, 25,000 animals get auctioned every single week. So my cattle prices are probably going to be lower than yours. You probably don't have uh, as many cattle to choose from as I do. Like if you're in Nebraska and you got one cell barn and it's four hours away, Chances are that one cell barn four hours away is not going to be auctioning 20,000 cattle a week, right? They're probably not. And so I probably do have a larger uh, inventory of cattle to choose from than most people. And my cattle prices here are probably lower than most people. But I also sell them for lower on the back end. You know, and so that's my big advantage is that I don't have to go very far to go to a cell barn and there are cell barns all over the place. I don't have to go very far either. I don't have to put them up on a truck and take them four hours away. You know, I drive, I drive an hour and 15 minutes and I can go to five different cell barns if I drive an hour and a half. And so, you know, cell barns aren't far away. There's a massive cattle population, but I do pay more for cattle feed. And land is also very cheap here in Texas. Central Texas land is very cheap. You know, it's not uncommon to see a field like a hundred acre field getting sold for like a 400 grand. You know, you, you could pay a, like a like seventeen hundred dollars a month and buy a hundred acre field. You know, you could you could pay like seventeen fifty a month and buy like 100 acres. So land here is also very cheap. Land in my area is very cheap. Our cattle are very cheap and uh, grain prices tend to be high. So, uh, you know, uh, but depending on where you are, your advantage is going to be different. I'm just giving you my numbers so that maybe if you get my numbers, you can say, oh, well, this guy in central Texas, he's uh, paying this much for feed. He's paying this much for cattle. And then you can just keep track of that. And then you can just go about your merry way. Right. But that's it for me today, YouTube. Y'all have a good one.